Hi, today we're going to talk about fog of war, why is it important, why is it so vital, and we're going to see that through an example of a case of single envelopment as well as a hammer and alvin operation. Through that, we're going to do a battle scenario thus analyzing both the vitality of fog of war as well as how you, one can exploit the fog of war uh, for one's advantage. Uh, take care that this is for teaching purposes and as a result I only choose only one side to have fog of war purely to show the vitality and the importance of fog of war. Now, Going directly to the video, prime before we start, just to clarify what you're going to see on the screen. With the QR uh, square, you are basic infantry divisions. The ones with the X will be reinforced. More units, a bit of armor. Slice will be rec uh, recon units. With a circle will be armor. Two lines will be mechanized, so means it will be a motorized division reinforced with some armor and tier it's the symbol that goes like this and the rest will not be used will not go that much into detail now let's see our scenario so we have two sides let's say the gray team and the red team now let's assume that the red team does not expect an assault from a great team at that right moment, but has generally placed its uh, troops at a general position to for a potential such an attack. Now, for this case, and that's why it, it allocates the troops in this way. The most important thing in regards to this picture is the fact that the AA positions, as you can see here and here, doesn't allow the attacker, the great team, and let's assume now that the great team, as we talked in the previous video, they don't have absolute air superiority. They have partial air superiority above their own forces and a bit above the enemy forces, but not absolute. Let's assume this is more like a World War II era scenario. So in this case, with the gray, you will see the fog of war. So the gray team doesn't really know exactly where the enemy troops are but they have let's say a general idea where they are so the combat plan would be something of those lines so the idea is to avoid urban warfare go around the enemy be able to push through and then capture uh, the river as fast as possible and at the sa same time cut off the main highway at this part of the front let's say the main highway will be this is this very big black line the area on the north here the uh, the one with the green will be forests and the one with the orange are mountainous areas so preferably an area that the attacker doesn't really want to attack and also you can see that Turkey has much more uh, armor and let's assume that the troops of the great team are much superior in quality than, than the red team and that the red team has more uh, quantity. Now, moving on, so these have the plan, they utilize the surprise, they initiate the offensive uh, and they start the attack. So this happens. This is the situation, so they manage to pierce through. Now, up to now, they don't have a major issue. They manage to destroy some units. They start to encirclement the line in front of them. As far as they can see, it's open. But, as you can see, the red team starts to bring in reinforcements from the north. Now, the fact that it does try to move reinforcements from the north is something that the great team does not observe yet that's the vitality of the fog of war now for the great team up to this point doesn't really matter so they make the next step which is to completely take advantage of their initial initiative capture and encircle the city and manage to push in uh, across their main major road cutting off the enemy and at the same time expanding uh, their hold of resistance. So let's say they manage to achieve that and they reach a scenario that looks something like this.
Now, they start to have a, an issue here. So they have an encirclement in the center. So that's good for them, but it means they have to spend troops there to covering that position. But here comes the importance of the Fuk of War. And here is the big lesson you have to learn. In their eyes, they don't really know how much troops the enemy has on the north and how much they have on the south. It's impossible for them to know, but they can't just disperse their forces as wide as possible just to cover all possible attacks because then they will be unable to even be able to capture any territory. And thus, what we see here is that the red team initiates a mild attack from the south and thus triggering the gray team to assume that, oh shit, they're going to do a counterattack from the south, so they're indirecting forces to the south. At the same time, they do have some spar forces on the north because they don't know, but the red team, as you gradually see, they start to allocate more and more and more forces to the north to initiate the single envelopment. And here we see how you can combine the fog of war. So as a defender, you try to conceal the fact that you move those troops, and you try to do so using your air power, as well as your anti-air power, using mountainous and forest areas to move troops through there, manage a set of concentration and concealment of the enemy, and then strike, and this is what we mean by single envelopment, and then do a hammer and anvil. Now, hammer and anvil, what does it practically mean? It means you have on one side the hammer, the punch that's going to come from the north, so here, and the anvil, which will be the southern front, which the purpose of this is to hold down as much troops as possible, that's the job of the anvil, while the north comes in and destroys the force. This is the aim for the red team. And for them to achieve that, the most vital thing is to take advantage of the fog of war. Now, as I said, the red team launches a very mild counteroffensive from the south, primarily from infantry units. The red team uh, uh, at the same time reinforces the north, and the gray team commits the remaining of its forces to attack and take the, uh, the enemy, the city of the enemy, not knowing exactly how many troops they have in the city, but the main goal for them is that if they manage to capture the city, or at least cross the highway and capture the other side of the, the river, then let's say to the bigger battle plan, that would be a massive achievement. For those that didn't already understand this, it's a really close resemblance of the uh, Operation uh, Uranus in World War II, the Stalingrad battle, uh, but in this scenario is a single envelopment, not a double envelopment, uh, and a hammer and anvil, which was not the case back then. Uh, so, they also they managed to liquidate the, force, liquidate the forces in the middle, let's say the, the morale massively fell, and so forth. The Russian forces defending the sea terribly exhausted, they retreated, but they did got some reinforcements. Also, as you can see, the Grey team will start receiving more reinforcements, but so will the Red team as well. Now, moving on, we come to a situation that looks something like this. The red team has managed to push a bit on the, no on the south, so they managed to gain a bit of a ground here, because it took the gray team a bit by surprise, but the gray team managed to respond quite rapidly, moving an armored division as, long, as well as two reinforced divisions to hold that position, they want, and as well as more infantry divisions, and they commit more on the attack on the city. Now again, moving back to the fog of war, they know the troops armor, let's say, has appeared here on the north. So they, let's say they're a bit worried and they're moving in division there. They know that the enemy might have armor here 
and some troops here so they do have quite a strong general location of troops there but since that tank came from the south in their mindset you can say it's easily assumed that that's where the, uh, the attack actually will come from but what they don't see is the emptiness over here Maybe then this is an actual combat scenario that if you study military analysis enough, you will see that in scenarios a lot. A whole division might move in and might be a bit overextended and it will come across a village. Let's assume that village is over here. And once it comes across to that village and up to that point, it has reached no resistance. The moment it reaches that village, there's just few gunshots from that village. As the attacker... Can you truly know what do you expect on the other side at that very moment? And initiative is very, very, very vital. I'm also going to make a video on initiative on a later date. But the idea is to take advantage of the moment. You push in, you get some resistance, you pull back. Okay, maybe there's way more troops there and I'm already overextended. And why this is the key? In, in this scenario, this armor unit here we as, can assume that currently it controls this area, so it's kindly widely spread out. It has barely seen some resistance here on the north, but it could theoretically, since the resistance is not heavy, try to push on. But the way they see the front, disregarding the fog of war, is that they don't know. What if they cross and there's huge forces of the enemy and that starts to become a massive issue now knowing that let's see how the battle continues so once you have this you have the next battle plan the, the, the great team will want to get a better position and continue and eliminate and get the city so their initial objective which is the city so for them the great team will mainly focus on destroying the southern pocket. So since the red team has attacked, now the, the red team has gone away from the fog of war. And the great team has concentrated enough troops there so they know what they are expecting. And they know their troops are strong enough to eliminate that forces of the red team. And let's assume that the red team troops are already exhausted. And they are in within the air power field. So the first aim for the great team is to eliminate that force. Then the second goal will be to cut off that same force from the uh, southern part of the city. So go like this. And at the same time, continue pinning down the troops on the city. Because for them, let's say, they don't know how many troops are in the city. Maybe they know, think that there are way more than they truly are. So once they manage to cut off the troops on the south, they can move on and completely cut off in the city. And at the same time, they try to push on to the north, as I said prior. Again, their forces on the north stay as they are. But few units moved in, start to move in into the city to reinforce that attack as to allow the armor units to start going either north and south based on how the outcome of that war envelops. And at the same time, the new reinforcements coming in will act as the reserve force, which is very vital. But here comes the hammer in the anvil tactic and the single envelopment. Now, the red team, after a period of time, it did manage to concentrate enough of its forces. It did manage to conceal those forces. And now, it should strike with all of, its, all of its remaining power from the north to the south with the goal to create the hammer to the anvil uh, that is already developing on the south. And going forward, we see something like this the red team has managed to push through from the north it has completely eliminated those forces so eliminating the sense that they could uh, they got overrun so the odds were so massively against them that those units just disappeared uh, disappear completely and they are pushing in fast and let me point out that since those units the gray units could destroy it 
they are viewed on the battlefield, their uh, amount of information they have available has massively decreased. As a result, there is a big fog of war. So they know an attack has happened, but they do not understand the scale of the attack. And that is the vitality of the fog of war in, com in taking uh, within the idea of shock and single envelopment, that you take the advantage that the enemy doesn't know what's happening to you at that moment, and you have to take advantage of that. So in this case, the, the red team has uh, all mobile forces on the south that they will try to uh, completely cut off the supply lines from the south, uh, eliminate the forces here and create together a massive hammer a concentration of force and hit on the anvil and at the same time ensure the encirclement. Now, the great team is not that the great team will not respond at all. The great team will try to respond as much as possible by trying to retreat its forces outside but since it has already committed its reserves on the south and since the reserves they knew are coming in and because of the fog of war they didn't understood the scale of the attack the troops here are already bogged down on city warfare so even if they want to retreat it's quite hard to do so it can just move away from the battle. They are constantly engaged, moving away and retreating might cause a panic or a complete distraction of the unit. So the, um, the ability for them to move away and reinforce a position, it's quite hard. So they will try to move away and uh, re-establish a front line on the south, but as it happened in, in Stalingrad, in our scenario here, uh, this will be quite impossible to do. So the red team has managed to push three, push in, they managed to reconcentrate their forces, and re reconcentration is very vital in war, because it's one thing to just concentrate your force, it's another thing to be able to reconcentrate, reorganize which unit is where, and exploit that operation. And they were going to achieve it by completing the encirclement as mentioned uh, forward. The great team at, at this point is trying, is trying to move away from the city and move, go out as much as possible, but they are pinned down by the red team, the anvil of the defense, which in this current scenario, the anvil starts from the city and moves to the south. So they are holding on to those great troops. They are not allowed to get, go away to move uh, fast. But at the same time, they already lost the main road. So it's even harder to move faster. And the enemy is using a big concentration. So even if some units do manage to reach there, if they themselves don't have the concentration, then they will be unable to actually stop the red team's advance. And here we see exactly that. The complete encirclement, so they smashed in, they managed to completely encircle the forces. Now, this scenario could have moved a bit differently, so they could have either chose to do the encirclement, as I show here, or directly move on and slash the enemy, so actually hit the enemy as much as possible on the anvil. And that doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the concept of the uh, hammer and anvil and fog of war, and why the fog of war is very vital in warfare, uh, and always uh, take into consideration that you never know what's on the other side, even with the best satellites, the best airplanes, information is key in warfare. And the one that knows the most, in many cases, takes the bigger advantage. Please, li please like, subscribe. If you disagree, if you agree, let me a comment. Thank you for watching and have a good night.